earlier just to tell you what's new in back reporting for Leap. Um, we've, done through, uh, we've gone through some changes in the build, you know, way how we actually build Leap. And I feel it has to be respect, uh, reflected in the way how we report issues there as well. So you may be aware that uh, Leap in its 15.3 version actually switched from, you know, rebuilding Sleep sources to actually build, uh, base the builds on top of Sleep binaries, right? So these packages actually come like compiled and if you actually want to fix something in them, you usually have to, you know, fix it in the internal infrastructure, you know, internal OBS, um, build it and then actually sync it over to Leap. And I felt like the Bugzilla setup was not really reflecting it. Um, so this talk will be mostly about wrapping up changes that happen in the wiki page, which is referenced down there, which is the open source submitting bug reports, which is nicely updated to actually reflect how you should be you know, reporting bugs nowadays. It points newcomers to forums open source org before actually opening issue, maybe known issue already, and definitely recommend everybody to read it. So, um, you know, once we actually started to base uh, Lee builds on Lee binaries, what were the challenges? So the, the obvious one was transparency, right? Uh, so there was a lot of complaint on the emails that people are now getting updates in their reference bugs which are not visible, like they're, you know, maybe reported by SUSE partner or SUSE employee internally. And the problem is that these bugs are actually not public by default, which is, you know, which is what it is. But there is some expectation from partners that this is always the case, so they don't have to be worried about the host names and so on. And we were actually looking about, you know, for a way how to actually improve that. Another thing is feedback loop. So if all the bugs from SLES are basically not public by default, um, then you know, like you, we, we sort of have to have lead bug and then maybe communicate back to SLES or kind of move it to SLES and then it's not really public anymore. And it takes you know, some extra effort to get communication maybe from the du duplicate bug in the leap back to the SLES. So um, you know, that was also an issue. And then another issue which is uh, community versus enterprise. And you know, we have a different ways how to set priority. For, for community bugs and for SLES, many people don't know that. Um, I also try to enforce the SLES way on 15.2 and I received a lot of pushback. So basically making sure that this is clear to both sides was really important, you know, so we do not break any conventions. So what was our take on actually addressing these challenges? Uh, of course, we want to increase transparency, we want to be open by default. Uh, but changing policy for all SUSE products to just, you know, suddenly open all bugs public by default was not a good thing. Because uh, a lot of partners would hit the issues, they would complain back, we want to preserve the current workflow and maybe, you know, figure something out. And we were also thinking, like, could we just review every single bug which is open and see if it's public-private? There is no capacity for that. Maintenance team would go crazy, you know, the same for us. It's just not the right way to go. And uh, then actually I, I've realized that Marina, Vansua, Mutusami, they are working, you know, on the public sleeper, uh, program, kind of making sure that we have some public facing products which are transparent, you know, they, they, everybody can see it. I was really thinking that we could probably extend it, use it, use it for, for SLES bugs, which is what in the end happened. So now every single bug, which is uh, for a SLES package in Leap, so we are talking about these inherited binaries, actually should be reported, uh, uh, reported against these public SLES products that you will see in Bugzilla. They were kind of hidden, that has been fixed, you will see on the next slide. But this is the new take. So literally, like, do not, if you already know that this is a sleep package, uh, just reporting it directly under public slash product would, you know, will shorten the communication loop. I will not have to move it around. You can just open it directly. Sleep teams will actually have a look at it. They will triage it and so on. Uh, also, our QA team actually did something really brilliant. They actually decided, well, you know, what about if we would actually start opening all of the open QA, internal open QA bugs, you know, in public slash products by default, you know, because there is not really anything confidential in it. Um, and uh, I feel like that was a brilliant move and suddenly every single auto-generated bug is also reported to these public products. And uh, yeah, there, there was a challenge because these public products were actually in different, uh, can I call it taxonomy? I guess then leap, so you couldn't see them from the new, new leap bug dialogue or new open source bug dialogue. And we fixed that as well, you will see it uh, in a moment. And you know, the next take on it should be actually advocate usage of these public products to increase transparency, you know, like make sure that the ratio of internal confidential bugs versus, you know, the publicly accessible increases. Um, so this is the new screenshot. If you haven't opened a bug for OpenSUSE for long, uh, maybe this, uh, this is new to you or maybe you are already familiar with it. So you can see OpenSUSE backports, OpenSUSE distribution, which in fact is Leap. You see Leap Micro. 
and then you see a bunch of public SUSE Linux Enterprise, uh, you know, items. And this is new. I feel like it's not there more for two months. And it required quite some changes on the, on the uh, SUSE IT side. There was also concern that, you know, suddenly we, uh, classification is the word. We changed the classification for the products. Customers may be actually using that class uh, classification and it will break the queries. So there was a little bit of dialogue and in the end it actually ended up really well. We, we, we did actually change the classification. And everybody who goes to Bugzilla OpenSUSE or clicks on new can now see these products. And uh, my ask for everybody is just to use them as much as possible, at least during the beta testing, post beta testing, it's problematic uh, because pr most people are not looking into them. But uh, you know, let's, let's find the most out of it. Um, so one interesting information that I received maybe two or three weeks ago from Van San. So he mentioned that the OpenSUSE community is the most active uh, public SLE beta tester, tester because these products was, were originally used by the public beta program for SLES. And, uh, you know, when I actually checked the number, I, I did run some queries. I actually found, like, uh, I believe it was 39 or 40 bucks that were not from, like, you know, known community accounts or, or SUSE accounts. It was, like, maybe Marvel, you know, Broadcom and so on. And, and some companies that you could just say from the domain that this is a company. And the rest, you know, 345 back out of these 345, which is 305, was basically reported either by SUSE employees, which is also a community, right? They very often actually work out, out of their scope of the work and so on, and or individual people, you know, which was really cool. So uh, I believe that, you know, by opening these public beta products for, for beta testing to community, we've actually gained way more beta testing for SLES as well, which is... I think this is like really the way which we would like to take for the future as well. And also, this is a time to give big thanks to Marina Vansan, Liv Gerald was involved as well, to the IT, you know, to do all of these changes that were kind of problematic. Nobody was really touching Bugzilla for a long time. So big thanks for making it happen. Uh, one problem, so if you actually allow people to report bugs directly to SLES, you know, there is the... Uh, <laughs> The priority for individual community bugs is clear. Like, you know, I'm working on them. I set the priority of my backlog. You know, I decide whether this is like top priority for me. Maybe I don't like the package. Maybe I will, you know, have a look in, in the next month or so. But for us, this is given. Like, it's usually done by a release manager um, or maybe project manager for a given group or maybe team lead. Depends on the agreement, mostly release manager. And like, uh, you know, if you change the priority from P5, which tells release manager, hey, this is waiting triage, you know, just have a look, set the priority, you know, move it to the right team you know, we will kind of, we will skip these bugs during the triage. So it's super critical that actually this is, this is respected. Also, if SLES release manager or me, you know, enforce priority for some community bug, telling people how, you know, when should they fix issues, that's also not okay. Uh, so I believe this needs to be super clear. So if you will be opening SLES bugs, just, just leave it on Stefan or whoever is, whoever is doing the triage and ideally leave the priority as P5. Or if it was set maybe under OpenSUSE and you, know, you are moving it over to public SLES, which should be done in me, by me or you know, whoever is actually, maybe Stefan or you, uh, just make sure it's P5. It will simplify the process. It will make it, you know, it will attract release manager sooner. So um, this is important. And big ask for everyone, you know, if you are in the team, which is like reporting bugs, you know, maybe during your testing or so, please utilize these products. And there is many teams that do not even know that they exist. These Bugzilla products were really hidden in the past, now they are exposed, but like you really have to go through Bugzilla OpenSUSE org to actually see them easily. Otherwise, you know, you, you can go through all products and then find it, but that takes some extra effort. And really just use it, tell, tell your partners, your teams, you know, if they would be interested in just making it public by default, it would actually help everyone. They would have more happy users about actually seeing what's being fixed in the patches that they apply to their systems. Because it's kind of weird, right? You, you are really like applying just security patches that you want, then you don't see what's being fixed. Um, that's not fully transparent. And that's really all from me, you know, for a lightning talk, that's enough. Otherwise, all the changes you can see in the uh, submitting bug reports uh, page, which looks like this one. Yeah, I have to move it to the next screen, I guess. Uh, I'm really happy that a lot of people actually did work on the structure. So before it was like one big blob on the page, which was like super long. Um, and now we actually moved like the priority description and so on to the separate page, which is uh, it's their friends down there. I believe it's the bug definitions or so. But the all basic information, including links to forums, where you should go to ask about the issues is on the page. And that's really all from me. Thank you very much. Thanks, Lubash.